Spiritus Domini, Repetit Orbem Terram, Alleluia. Et hoc quod In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind for a moment our sins, our failings, and ask the Lord for his pardon, mercy, and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church and every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, and the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya and Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. 
As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. the heart of your faithful people and enkindle in them the fire of your love. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. My uh, grandfather 
was a very young boy when his, his mother died. Uh, his father had become a terrible alcoholic. And my grandfather was basically abandoned when he was in the second or third grade. Uh, he was left to his own devices. He was born in Ireland, and of course, uh, there was a time of great uh, strife in Ireland. Uh, when he was only 16 years old, he joined the Irish Republican Army uh, and fought during the Irish Civil War. He ended up in prison, in Port Leash Prison, finally escaped, and ultimately he made his way uh, to America. I think about uh, my grandfather uh, in the context of the readings today. Why? We will get back to it. Genesis chapter 11, you notice, uh, is in, in Genesis chapter 11, you will notice a contrast with the first reading that we had in Acts of the Apostles. What is Genesis chapter 11? It is the building of the Tower of Babel. At that time, all people spoke one language. And in their speaking of one language, they decided to construct a tower that would be to God in heaven. And because of the arrogance of man and woman, God struck them all and gave them many different languages, which brought about a confusion. Notice Genesis chapter 11, the Tower of Babel. The arrogance of mankind. And then notice Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Now uh, there were Medes and Parthenians, all parts of the empire, speaking different languages, but all understood. They understood because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the gift of the Holy Spirit allowed them to understand one to another that which was being spoken to them. They were open to the gift of faith, and faith offered them something, an understanding. What was it that faith offered them? What was the understanding that was being offered to them? Well, maybe we can get a glimpse of it when we listen to John's Gospel. Notice Jesus enters the room, and they were fearful. They were afraid. And Jesus' first words are, peace be with you. I think to myself that uh, these words spoken 2,000 years ago, the context of Genesis chapter 11 and Acts of the Apostles uh, can be understood in this question. Peace be with you. The fear. You see, the arrogance of mankind, of humankind, leads to sin. Pride. We become the center of the universe, what we want, what we desire. We become the center of the universe, and as a result, that's where we begin to sin. We see sin enter into the human equation, and when you see sin enter into the human equation, you see the destruction of sin, which enters into the human equation. Jesus says, peace. What's the peace that the disciples are longing for? They're afraid. They're afraid because of their lives. But when Jesus is speaking about peace, he's speaking about a different reality. He's not saying that there is nothing that's going to be difficult for you here. He is saying that I will abide with you in this moment. And perhaps that these are the words that we need to hear, that God abides with us. The Spirit abides with us in this moment. For the last nine, ten weeks, we we're dealing with the coronavirus. Everyone being locked in. All of a sudden, all the distractions that are a part of your life and my life are gone. You can't go to a restaurant. You can't go out to a park. You're locked inside. It has a way of focusing us. What am I going to do? I don't have all these distractions. I have only to look at myself. Where am I? 
vis-a-vis God. I don't like myself too much. I don't like the circumstances. And, and what do you see start to happen? You see that all of a sudden, people start to become very, very agitated. We see that people are becoming agitated because we see all of a sudden everyone starts going out and forgetting all sorts of social distancing and concern for one another. So we start to see the first signs of this. All elected officials, wear your mask, social distance, don't be, what have you. But perhaps then we, we see this sense of selfishness most dramatically on display uh, when a man's life is taken. George Floyd's life in Minnesota. That for eight minutes a police officer could kneel on a man and take his life and others could stand by and watch it happen. This is outrageous. Now, from a worldly perspective, we can understand why there is violence, right? Violence is the reaction to a situation which has become intolerable. I understand that because I think of my grandfather, a boy in Ireland, who found the oppression of the British to be intolerable, and who went to war in his own way. You know, the Irish armies were ragtag armies. They were like terrorist armies. Violence is a reaction to a situation sometimes which becomes intolerable. And certainly this seems to have been the case in our own country these last few days. Perhaps there was a thinking, we've elected a black president, there is no more racism. Clearly, we see there is. But now the question is, is we as Christians have to grapple with this because what we can understand is, is yes, there is evil in the world. The situation has become intolerable. It is understandable, even though I may not like it, understandable, that, but how do I respond as a Christian? How is the Christian supposed to respond? And the Christian responds with love. We must respond with love. This is why uh, Dr. Martin Luther King objected to violence, passive resistance. And if you consider how long Ireland was under the dominion of Great Britain, England, and then you look at the example of one of Britain's colonies, India, and how in India was made to lick the boot of England for so long, and it was a man in nonviolence who threw off oppression. This may be a clue to us. Gandhi one time was asked, uh, you know, which is the greatest of all religions? And he says, Christianity. The problem is he has never met a Christian. This is the indictment of you and me, brothers and sisters. You see, we have been given a gift by the Holy Spirit. This is what St. Paul is saying to us in Corinthians, right? Faith is a gift. But here's the funny thing about gifts is the gift is only as valuable as the receiver values it. In other words, is the gift of the Holy Spirit transforms my life to the extent I allow myself to transform my life. This is the old maxim, grace builds on nature. And if you think about when you may have given a gift to one of your children at uh, Christmas time, they take the gift and they think it's the greatest gift since sliced bread on Christmas Day. By December 27th, it's at the bottom of the closet. The gift is no longer valued. How is it that perhaps our faith, you see, our faith requires a response. It is not simply to be a moment of consolation, because notice there is an action. There is an action in the gospel. Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. That when I receive this gift from God, it demands some sort of activity in my life. And I think of my grandfather, who many years later was so upset 
when one of his colleagues, Michael Flannery, who had been with him in Port Leash Prison, or he had been with P Michael Flannery in Port Leash Prison, was selected to be the Grand Marshal of the St. Patrick's Day Parade, but Cardinal Cook would not bless the parade because of Mr. Flannery's involvement with the IRA. A Christian response. A Christian response and an understandable human response. And the truth of the matter is, is we are human beings and we are Christians and there is always going to be a tension. And I know for my own grandfather, there was this tension all throughout his life. To oppr fight oppression and to do so as a Christian. And the truth is, is sometimes we get it right and sometimes we get it wrong. And so we must be patient with each other because after all, what was the initial inclination of Peter when the guards came to arrest Jesus in the garden but to take out his sword and chop off the ear? Brothers and sisters, we are one family. We must speak with one voice to oppose oppression, to oppose the evil of racism. I got a lot of friends of mine sending me images of the graffiti on St. Patrick's Cathedral this morning, which was terrible and a desecration. It is terrible and a desecration. The reality is St. Patrick Cathedral was made by human hands and the graffiti will wash off. George Floyd was created by God and the life that God had given him now exists all for eternity in heaven. But he does not get it back. The problem, brothers and sisters, is, is racism affects your life and my life. And until we can see how we have been affected by racism and by oppression, you know, Billy Joel wrote the song or sang the song, We Didn't Start the Fire. We didn't. This is the nature of sin. But we as Christians are called to be a leaven in the world. How is it that we can be a leaven? How is it that I can challenge the bigotry I hear uh, among my friends or in my own family, the bigotry in my own heart? How can you? How is it that those who are protesters, even taken up with the wildness of protesting, the evil of the destruction of the protest sometimes. How is it that the other is not the other, but is my brother, the one whom I love? This, I think, is the challenge of the scriptures for us on this Pentecost Sunday. Because the Holy Spirit has been sent upon us and bestows his gifts upon us, brothers and sisters, but we must value the gifts. And we know that we value and cherish the gifts when we put them into effect in our lives. And so today we pray that we all might have the courage to put these gifts into effect in our life. That we may know what they are. That we may have the wisdom so that we can put these gifts into effect in our life. Because it is in that way that we transform the world and perhaps this is what Jesus means when he says, go out and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What he is saying is, baptize the nation in love 
not the sappy sentiment of love, I love you, but to be for the others, to lay down our life for the others in very concrete ways. Those who were gathered understood one another. Something happened. What has happened for you and me this Pentecost Day? May God bless you. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So now we present our prayers of petition to our Heavenly Father. To God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed for his will is that all of humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. For the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her, let us pray to the Lord. For the peoples of the world, that the Lord may graciously preserve harmony among them, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are oppressed by any kind of need, that the Lord may graciously grant them relief, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and our own community, that the Lord may graciously receive us as a sacrifice acceptable to himself, let us pray to the Lord. In a particular way, just remember some of our viewers in a particular way, Julia Corain, Rose and Sal Campanelli, Mr. and Mrs. Frank Montanella, Maria Morena, Rosanna Fidele, Mrs. Mary McMorrow, Sister Margaret Guerreau, Sister Mary Jane Herbert, Sister Anne Seeley, Mrs. Evelyn McBride, Francis McGarry, Walter Zimmerman, Carol Moog, Sister Pat Rutter, Ron and Christy Tut, Mr. J. Crescenzo, Helen and Ray Avales, Anne McDonough, Mildred Delapina, and Patricia Iliardi, we pray to the Lord. And for those intentions which lie in the silence of our hearts, those intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know all our needs and petitions here and answer us. If they be in accord with thy holy will, we ask this as all things through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through the same Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came into birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and pray particularly today for Michael, a New York City police officer who's very ill. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of your service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised up to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have died in a particular way, Didier Vitalis, for whom the Mass is offered. who, having gone before us with the sign of faith, rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray, O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church. Safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. So, uh, in a particular way, this, uh, this, uh, this Pentecost Sunday, we pray for our nation, uh, we pray for our police officers, those who serve. Uh, uh, we pray for our police officers. We pray for those who are protesting. Pray for all those who are fearful and afraid. In a particular way, we remember all those who are suffering uh, in a special way as a result of this very difficult time between the COVID, cri the COVID crisis and the, uh, this unrest in our nation. We pray that the Holy Spirit now come down uh, and then give us his, his courage and strength. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.